It's rare for me to become obsessed with roguelike dungeon crawlers. While I appreciate the numerous ways that they allow players to invest their time, I feel like my standards are kept high by the few that seem to do it so well. When I first booted up Crown Trick, I didn't expect to spend 10 hours of my day glued to the screen, but there I was. And now, almost 30 hours later, I'm still just as excited to jump in and play more. Crown Trick gives us a narrative about nightmares through a dimension that isn't completely explained until very late in the game. Players assume the role of Elle, a young girl who has been thrust into a mission to defeat these nightmares by a talking crown. Their agreement to work together is symbiotic and not completely friendly. There are moments when Elle attempts to open up to the crown, but there's so much pushback there and we witness their relationship evolve over the course of the game. Much of the narrative is found in notes after defeating bosses. These clues of nightmares will give you an idea of what's going on, but the delivery of these notes is prolonged. However, this isn't a bad thing because the world itself is fun to exist in and throughout their journey you'll meet others who are trapped in this world with you. These characters each have their own personalities and random tidbits of advice, but mostly they are used to take your soul stones and upgrade your character. As players enter dungeons, you'll be given a choice of two random weapons. When you clear the levels, more weapon types become available and each of them have their pros and cons. For instance, the attack range, stats, active and passive abilities, and even reload timing have to be considered when choosing your weapon. You'll have plenty of chances to find rare and more powerful gear during gameplay, but for the most part, the weapons are each well balanced. What sets runs apart are items, summons, and relics, with relics being the star of the show. Relics are stackable equipment that adds passive abilities to your characters. There's a minimal downside to them, so doing whatever you can to equip them will only make your run easier. Sometimes you'll have to choose between three relics, but the game makes their rarity and description straightforward and easy to understand. You can have some runs where you feel like a dungeon crawling god as you clear rooms with ease. Some elements factor into a quick death at the hands of a group of enemies. Items are consumables that can do things like power you up for a few turns or unleash some magical abilities without using MP. They are essential to remember when you feel like you are destined for death but then realize that you have an item that can change an encounter's tide. Summons are basically magic and also make up the mini bosses that you'll face. Fighting them for the first time will allow you to equip them in later runs and you have two slots available to do so. They're each fun to mess around with and should play into any strategy that you have. Furthermore, these can be upgraded later on in the game. Dungeons are turn-based which I feel is Crown Trick's best feature. Each step you take will grant the enemy a turn. This means that you can take all the time you need to strategize your approach, whether it be planning when to execute an ability or utilizing the environment to add some additional damage. The game loop is sound and as I became more comfortable with the systems, the entire experience became more approachable. Crown Trick is a difficult game, especially early on. You're limited on item space and only have one space for a health potion. Enemies can be brutal at times as they do their best to surround you in every room. Taking them down will give you gold, soul stones, or equipment. While soul stones aren't removed after death, gold is. Well, without the proper character upgrades. Luckily, there's plenty of ways to spend your gold in a dungeon, whether it be a gotcha machine, slot machine, end of dungeon dealer, or even some text-based dialogue choices that are based on pure chance. Sprinkled throughout the dungeon, are gimmicks and hazards that will weave into your strategy. You can spill poison onto enemies, burn them, and so on. The only downside is that you are affected by the elements, so you have to make sure that you're not the one on the receiving end of the destruction. It's just so satisfying as you get through a room untouched, using each of your abilities to take out the enemies. I should also mention the very important dash skill known as Blink, which regenerates as you break enemies' defenses. It's essential to use, but exhausting it is always a bitter pill as you'll scramble to do things that replenish it, especially during a boss. Crown Tricks dungeon themes become a bit repetitive after making your way through them so often. It all becomes a bit too recognizable and predictable during the late game hours. Furthermore, I always seemed to get a weapon when I first entered and never changed it because it's the strongest weapon that I found. I just wish there was a better way to signal if weapons you see on the ground are better at a glance than to have to read through their description. Also, I wouldn't say I liked how additional stages just made the enemies harder instead of introducing a new batch of them. For the most part, however, Crown Trick is the most user-friendly dungeon crawler I've ever played. Everything I could have wanted was in view and accessible, from equipment descriptions to which squares can be affected by my magic and even the silly things that genre fans love like skipping your turn, secret areas, and so many unlockables. This game is just oozing with a love for the genre that includes all the systems one could want. Late game changes by putting soul stones in the inhabitants of your hub. Any odds you'd wish to tip in your favor can be done here to make your late dungeon enemies more manageable.
Crown Trick is a roguelike that isn't afraid to make you feel overpowered through its systems. However, it's also not afraid to test your skills by introducing powerful enemies and traps. No matter what though, there are plenty of ways for a player to take on the challenge. It's this design that makes Crown Trick a must play for both dungeon crawler and roguelike fans. Even as I'm writing this, I just want to play more, which is the first time I've ever wanted to be in a nightmare. Noisy Pixel is giving Crown Trick a 9 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review on NoisyPixel.net. NoisyPixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.